NDSU will be holding in-person classes this fall. That decision comes after the school received a $20 million federal grant to help with COVID-19 safety efforts. The money will be used on what's called high flex education. This means that those who want to attend classes in person can, and those who are at risk or get sick can opt to learn remotely. The same goes for faculty. Other schools in the Valley are also trying to figure out the safest approach during this COVID-19 pandemic. This morning, the Valley Today's Kelly Hubbard is giving us a closer look at what some of the other colleges and universities are planning. And Kelly, it sounds like everyone has an opinion on this story. Yeah, hi, good morning, Lisa. People are back and forth pretty much from the comments I saw on our Facebook post. I think 1,100 people or so reacted to it just as of yesterday. But yeah, many people are up in arms right now about NDSU's plans amid COVID-19. But this morning, we're learning that other schools in the Valley aren't far off. MSUM, UND, and Concordia College all plan on having in-person fall semesters. But of course, with everything, there's a catch. MSUM says classes will start August 24th. That's under two months away. Classes will be taught on campus, complemented with online or hybrid instruction. And right now, MSUM has freezed all undergraduate tuition for fall semester. The University of North Dakota is requiring parents, faculty, staff, and students to all wear face masks on campus, just like NDSU. And UND also says you're required to wear a face mask when attending class or events indoors in dining centers, except when eating or drinking, when riding in campus sh shuttles, buses or vans with two or more people. Now, right now, Concordia College is modifying their full semester. The biggest change is the college will conclude the semester with online or remote instruction following Thanksgiving. Now, Lisa, I know this was a lot, but we will, I'll make sure I break down this further for you guys on our Valley News Live app. It is a lot and uh, every school is different, but of course affects thousands of people here in the Valley. COVID-19 has shut down a city construction project in Minot in Northwestern North Dakota after 10 construction workers tested positive for COVID-19. City officials say those who tested positive have been isolated and have not returned to the work site. That site has also been closed down for cleaning and additional testing. In North Dakota, health officials say 12 counties are reporting new cases of COVID-19, including seven positive tests, each in Cass and Grand Forks counties. 32 people were confirmed with COVID-19, increasing the state's total since the pandemic began to nearly 4,000. The state has now seen cases in all but five counties. The number of hospitalizations dropped by two to 25. The death toll remains at 78. A Minnesota prison inmate has died after testing positive for COVID-19 earlier this month. The Minnesota Department of Corrections says the 43-year-old man died Tuesday night at a hospital. The Corrections Department says if his death is determined to be related to COVID-19 complications, it would be the first such death of a person incarcerated in Minnesota. Meanwhile, Minnesota's Health Department is reporting 365 new cases linked to COVID-19. Officials say the active case count is now at 2,863. Nine more deaths have been reported, bringing the death toll to 1,406. Of those, 1,107 happened in a long-term care facility. More than 29,000 people are listed as recovered. It's now nine minutes before seven. Let's get a check of our first alert storm team forecast with meteorologist Lisa Green. Good morning. Today we're starting off our Friday with some great conditions, quiet weather after yesterday's storms. And check this out. We've got the sun to the left of the sun. Maybe you notice it under our banner here. A summertime sun dog there. Those form when we've got ice crystals in the air, basically when uh, they're in between us and the sunshine and uh, those ice crystals refract that sunlight. We have it a lot more in the wintertime simply because it's so cold in the wintertime. Uh, but we have those high thin clouds that are still working their way out. The sun's at a low angle this morning and it's shining through those ice crystals in those clouds and we're getting that sun dog this morning kind of cool to see uh, as we're getting closer and closer to July here's a look at your temperatures right now we are into the 50s and 60s no freezing temperatures at all here uh, in the valley we're well above that and we're going to really heat things up as we head into the weekend here's a look at your radar and satellite map we've really quieted down since last night let's zoom out you can see there's rain there's some thunder down into southern Minnesota but here in the valley 
Valley, we're quiet. And again, you can see those thin clouds in the south and east. Those will clear out over the valley as we advance through the day today. So looking good uh, for being outdoors here today. We've got good grilling weather. Lunchtime, we'll see those temperatures getting closer to 80 degrees. And then this afternoon and evening back into the mid uh, to some low 80s. Lots of sunshine throughout. Wind will be out of the northwest and shouldn't be too strong. We're looking at wind gusts into the teens, maybe a couple of 20s coming up for this afternoon. So a great Friday ahead. And hey, looking forward to the weekend. You're definitely going to want to find ways to stay cool, whether it's at the pool, at the lake, maybe just hanging out indoors and enjoying uh, the sunshine from your window and the air conditioning at home. We're looking at conditions that are going to be really starting to heat up by Sunday, especially. But even tomorrow, we're getting into the upper 80s for your Saturday and then Sunday, a high of 91. Look at both days. We've got some partly cloudy, mostly sunny skies uh, for the weekend, too. Our threat for severe weather or even some storms or rain at all looks really low. So we're looking at some good weather coming up for the weekend for anybody who wants to be out and about. You'll just need your sunblock here. Heading into the start of next week, you're going to want to find ways to stay cool again. We've got some heat and humidity coming back, too, uh, especially into Monday with temperatures into the 90s and that chance for an isolated shot for some rain and thunder, but especially heading into Tuesday, Wednesday, even Thursday, we'll have some chance for some scattered rain and some thunderstorms. So summertime heat, summertime storms coming up in the forecast as we're working our way through the end of June and heading into July toward that July 4th holiday weekend next weekend. So look, at least in the weekend leading up to it, still looking pretty warm and summery. Very nice. Thank you, Lisa. Heads up for drivers, starting on Monday, you'll see a bit of a change on I-94 in Fargo. Road work preps are underway. You're going to see the closure of some passing lanes going both east and west, starting from the Fargo Diversion, which is mile marker 338 to 42nd Street Southwest. The closure is for crews doing soil tests in that area for a guardrail project that will take place next year. North Dakotans are being targeted by COVID-19 related scams, and we're losing a lot of money in our schemes and ripoffs this morning. The Federal Trade Commission ranks North Dakota third among all 50 states for the median fraud loss due to COVID-19 scams. On average, North Dakotans have lost roughly $538. Nationwide, the number is $283. People are being scammed when they're buying masks, hand sanitizers, and also those homemade testing kits, which officials say are never sent to a lab to be tested. Experts also say contact tracers, the people who call everyone who came in contact with someone who has COVID-19, never will ask for money. North Dakota State Legislature has approved more than $400 million in pandemic response funds. This comes after federal lawmakers passed the CARES Act, which gave states room on how to use the money. But, of course, it has to be COVID-19 related. North Dakota allocated another chunk of the $1.25 billion it was awarded. Some state agencies are using their funds to install no contact technology and improve telehealth services. Others are trying to stock up on PPE and other health equipment. There's still more than $300 million left to allocate. Lawmakers will be meeting again in the coming months to figure out where that money will go. In Minnesota, Governor Tim Walz has approved plans to distribute $841 million in federal coronavirus aid to cities and counties across the state. The governor also approved $12 million for food banks and food shelves that have seen a surge in demand. The money comes from the $2.1 billion that Minnesota received under the sweeping federal economic rescue law. The state will distribute the $841 million to local government starting next week, according to a set of formulas that lawmakers agreed to during last week's special session under a deal, of course, that later fell apart. However, Governor Walls says he is going to follow the original agreement. This is a, a bit of a different uh, training for our Red Hawks players. Check that out. That's the team, but they're not on the field just yet. They'll get there. Of course, the uh, Red Hawks season has been delayed. It'll start next week. Safety first. Players and coaches stop by the Fargo Dome to get tested for COVID-19. Now, until the results come back, practices will be held with extra social distancing. Well, it's for the safety, not only myself, but for everybody, really, you know, and we obviously all want to try and make this thing happen. So we understand that, you know, that's that's a big deal, you know, to keep everybody healthy. Um, otherwise, this thing won't work. Lots of other leagues, you know, they're not fortunate enough to be out here playing. So hopefully we can be a model for them on how their league can run in the future. Once the players get their results, they'll be allowed back inside the clubhouse. 
The 2020 season kicks off in one week at Newman Outdoor Field. Of course, the uh, baseball players were not the only ones getting tested yesterday, and another mass testing event is planned for today at the Fargo Dome. Yesterday's mass event ended a little earlier than expected. According to Fargo Cast Public Health, the state lab in Bismarck had reached its capacity. Testing will start again this morning at 10. It is expected to be open until 6 tonight. The outdoor drive-up testing will be held in the west parking lot of the Fargo Dome. Testing is free. Insurance, of course, is not required. Okay, let's see how you, uh, well, we have been telling you all of the guesses, but let's see what the answer is now to our question of the morning on Facebook. Today's question, almost all of us have this in our homes, but only 40% of us use it. If you're a dentist or a dental hygienist, cover your ears because uh, the answer is dental floss. We all say we floss, but we don't do it. Remember, you can play along every weekday morning by heading to our Valley News Live Facebook page. Target is expanding the items that you can pick up curbside. People will soon be able to drive to a nearby Target and pick up fresh and frozen grocery items like milk and bread without having to browse aisles or even park their car. The national retailer said that it's adding hundreds of grocery items to its same day services. As many Americans are asking for this, they are still looking for safer ways to shop during this coronavirus pandemic. By bulking up its same-day grocery assortment, of course, Target is going to be competing with other big retailers like Walmart, Amazon, and of course, a lot of our local grocery stores also do pickup and delivery. Thank you so much for waking up with the Valley today. We're coming up on 7 a.m. here on your Tuesday morning. The Today Show and CBS This Morning are just about to start, but of course, the Valley Today rolls on. We have more live up to the minute news and weather for you right now on the Fargo CW. We'll see you over there. Have a great Friday and an even better weekend.